Yes, people, it's John, it's Frankie back again, doing a video for my mum's house today. Um, this is your match preview for Southampton versus Everton tomorrow, a game that me and Frankie will be at. So if you do see us, come over, say hello, we'll have a chat about the game and maybe a pint and a soft drink for the kids. Sorry it's a day late with Michael being away and obviously me working, it is tough. So Everton go into this game unbeaten in five. Granted, there's been some one half of decent performances in some games last week against Fulham was an absolute shit show from the first whistle to the last whistle. I think I did make that pretty obvious in the uh, the, the video that me and Michael done. So we go up against the team that haven't won in the league this season and it's a game you'd look at and you think Everton should go there unbeaten in five. And we have put, as I said before, some decent 45 minutes in at least in some games this season. But then you look at Southampton and I think they only got beat by City 1-0 the other week. Yeah. You know, and granted, I know City did miss quite a few chances. They were playing the other night in the Cup. They put a good performance in there as well. Against Stoke. So, yeah, I mean, I think they were 3 0 up, weren't they? Southampton or something like that. And Stoke scored 2 or I think it finished 3-2. Sort of like but yeah. whatever it was, Stoke run them close. So, they're through to the next round of the Cup after knocking us out of the Cup. So, this is a bit of a revenge match for Everton I'd like to think anyway yeah. the team probably will be a bit changed from that cup game but when you look at it on paper this is a game that Everton should win but I'm telling you now we have to improve our performance 100% from last week against Fulham and Southampton you, they probably will get a win somewhere along the line hopefully it's not tomorrow after we do this massive journey there and back thanks to him What's your feelings and your take on what we can expect tomorrow from the game? Um, I expect a win. To be fair, you know they haven't won since they haven't won Premier League game since the fourth of March in twenty twenty three against Leicester, and it was only one 0 So yeah, we should win. We should know? we should win, but this is Everton for you know. And listen, yeah. they're going to be up for it. Obviously, they went through in the other night at home in the cup, so their fans are going to be up for it. And this Everton team now. You know, Sean Dice is going to put out. We just don't know what we're going to get. As I said, there's been some good individual performances lately. Notably, I think Ashley Young's been doing well. I think Michael Keane's been well for the, for the majority of the season. I thought Garner guy had a good game last Dwight week. McNeil. <coughs> Dwight McNeil's being brilliant. Obviously, and I, if them sort of players that I've just named, the likes of Endai and McNeil, God's will, and he does make it tomorrow because he is a doubt. If them two players turn up, then I don't think Southampton stand much of a chance. Because that, that's a step in quality when you've got the likes of Ndai, um, especially Ndai. Not so much McNeil, but on this season's form, I'd like to think he could have a big bearing on the outcome of the result tomorrow. Um, there is a few injuries. It looks like Jimmy Garner's going to be out for at least a month. McNeil's with the physios yesterday, so it is touch and go with him. Sean Dice is a bit more optimistic about him than, than a few other players. Brantwaite bracket but um, back in training, which is good to hear whether he starts him or not. I don't know. I've got me 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 thoughts on him. I wouldn't have no problem starting Ashley Young again tomorrow, even though Coleman was on the videos training at Goodison yesterday, I think it was. But this is a game that if Everton do go into it, you know, putting a performance in that we have seen a couple of times this season. And I think we do beat them. How do you think yeah. we beat Southampton tomorrow, Frankie? Um, a lot of pace. You know, because these have got good players. They've got, like, Aaron Ramsdale in goal. Yeah. They've got Cameron mm -hmm. Archer. He, he, he can score goals. And they've got um, that defender from City, Howard Bellis. He's a good defender. So, like, yeah, we do need pace. And we need to have a lose, to be honest, game if he does start. Well, you see, we'll talk about a certain Carvalhoon. It seems every video that we're doing, we're talking about him. Um, he's been coming out with a few comments lately and he's done another comment today well, another another little paragraph shall we say about Sean Dyche and Sean Dyche is, when he came in he didn't rush him back and he, he got him fit and he he, he ended the, the, the little interview with something like under Sean Dyche you have to be fit fit now I think sometimes me and Michael on here and other, other fan channels, and Everton fans in general, I think we've been a bit critical about Sean Dyche not rushing players back, because in the past, Calvert-Lewin has been rushed back, and look look at his injury record. It is better now, but we're still not seeing the benefit from Sean Dyche not rushing him back, because he's not working hard enough for me. 
Sean Dice has come out and he said, you know, about Jared Branthwaite. He, there's certain players, including him, who are getting to Premier League fit. Well, I'm not being funny. What the hell is Premier League fit? Yeah. If you're fit, you're, you're fit. fit. You know, and the only way... I've played fo football at a good level, and me and Michael have agreed on this. The only way you get match fit, i.e. Premier League fit, is by playing matches. It's no good giving them 10 minutes here and there because it takes you 10 minutes to get going. Yeah. So, for me... If, even if Branthwaite's 90% fit, I put him in tomorrow. And here's my team, and here's how I play Branthwaite into the team. So it's Pickford in goal, Mikalenko. I put Branthwaite in with Keane. And I know I said on a video last week that by the numbers, Tarkovsky and Branthwaite do have the best defensive record out of the centre-halves at the club. I think Tarkovsky stumped the place out this season, so I'd have no problem playing Keane with Tarkovsky. And apparently Tarkovsky's still injured. I reckon he's being rushed back. He's still injured, isn't he? Well, uh, yeah. Being but, but see, so this proves the point. So if Tarkovsky has been playing with an injury, but yet you've got to be Premier League fit or fit fit to get into a Sean Dice team, this just proves to you that he has his favourites. And if his yeah. favourites aren't fully fit... He will still find a place for them. He's done it with Ashley Young. Barely three <coughs> Well, it is, yeah. You know, McNeil, again, you know, he went off last week with an injury. I guarantee you, if McNeil's only 70, 80% fit tomorrow, he plays him. I don't have a problem with that. Because a 70, 80% fit McNeil is better than the likes of Takora in the team. Yeah. But it just proves that he does have his favourites. Apparently, Tarkovsky's had a glute injury and he was injured in pre season as well. I think I said this the other week your glutes around your, your, your bum area going into your leg all around that area but if he's not fully fit but he's still playing him it just you're is. either well you're either Premier League fit or fit fit yeah or it's your favourite you're playing your favourites yeah. yeah again go carrying on with the team Ashley Young at right back I know Coleman was back in training yesterday he really 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 does some fancy Patterson I think that's pretty obvious to see yeah. now even when Patterson has been you know, in, Isn't in the he's squad still to play. Injured, though? He's still injured. He is still injured, but I'm it. I just don't think he rates him anyway, even when he has been. I don't think he's, he's playing Premier Coleman League. and Young before him. It's a big difference from coming down from you know in the Premier League from where he come from. Uh and Dai on the left wing, I think he's been fantastic for us there. You know, I'm not gonna go into it again because I think we all know how much I rate the, the kids at Everton. Skillful. I think he can rip Southampton a new one. Mangala in the middle for me. Tim Eberhuman, unfortunately, is still out. And Garner Guy, I thought he was probably our best player against Fulham last week. Yeah. And this is an eye-opener for everyone, I, I imagine. Um, I'd have no problem putting Lindstrom in tomorrow. He's back Premier League fit, apparently. So he's fit, fit now. So I'd have no problem putting Lindstrom in against a Southampton team who do concede goals. Let's see what he's like. I think it was against Leicester where he had the chance early on and he had yeah. a great first half against Leicester. And I can imagine if he does play Lindstrom tomorrow, I think he'll get the same sort of game from him as what we've seen against Leicester. Yeah. And up front, I make the change. I go with Beto. And for me, Dominic Calvert-Lewin, he's a better all-round player. Let's be honest about it. We've slagged him off on here. He is an all-round better player than Beto when we see it. When Dominic yeah. Calvert-Lewin can be bothered, we're not seeing sweat on shirts, we're not seeing him close defenders down. And I know people will come on, and I said this the other night, that he's playing isolated. But at the end of the day, if you're isolated, you go and look for the ball. Duncan Ferguson was isolated when he played for us. He was a great, he held the ball up, great Duncan. As soon as he got it, he got ball wide, and then he'd get into the box and wait for the cross to come in from the wingers. That's what I want to see from Calvert Lewin if he's isolated up there. Come and get the ball and play it off and then he get in the box. He doesn't do anything. He's not doing anything, he Calvert Lewin. He doesn't press no one. He jogs around the whole pitch. Yeah, and that's the, well, he's neat. well, I wouldn't even say the whole pitch. I think he just jogs along that line. Yeah, yeah so that I, that's my team. I play better up, up tomorrow. What's your team, Frankie? Um, I say the same as you. That's my team. <laughs> but I wouldn't start Lynch when I bring him on second half. I, I won't play there. It'll have to be Lindstrom, to be fair, won't it? There's no one else to play. Harrison, isn't it, bro? Yeah, actually, I'll start Harrison. I'd rather play Lindstrom. I think Harrison's better than Lindstrom. Yeah, but be Calvert-Lewin's better than Beto, but if you're not performing, let's Harrison see what, let's see what these other... 
not consistently, and we haven't seen enough of Lindstrom to see if he can perform consistently because he's though, another man. one who's been injured. We've seen enough against Leicester in the first half for me to say I think Lindstrom deserves a start against Southampton tomorrow. Now he's fit again. Yeah. Uh, my score, I'm going to go for a 2 1 win to Everton. I don't think we can see it. They have, like, they don't, they don't really score. This is but, Yeah. So I do think a 1 0 and a Woodstop and think better scores it. I hope you're right, mate. He cried last week, didn't he? he well, it, but the thing is, like, I mean, I don't like that. I don't know whether I like to see that or not, but it's emotion, you know, and passion. I mean, if Ruin was to be believed since he's been at Everton, he's always come out and said he's always supported Everton since when he was a kid. Now that is passion for you. When you score a goal, and was it you know, was it basically a way of saying, you know, now I've finally got a little a little bunk. He hasn't been even getting much as a substitute appearance, has he really? Now I've had a chance and I've scored the goal. Let's hope the manager takes notice, and in my opinion. Let's hope Sean Dyche has took notice from that yeah. ten minute cameo that we seen from Beto like, he scores, um, last week. If he comes on ten minutes, like he gets in and well, gets away. I, I actually think he's done more than ten minutes last week than what Carver Loon's done. He does it every week, he does more than Carver Loon every week. I know, you need to wash your hair before tomorrow, mate. You've still got bed okay, before we go to Southampton. Yeah. yeah. So as I said before, it's a game me and Frankie will be at tomorrow. So if you do see us, come over and say hello. Um We'll have a drink. We'll have a chat about the game and about Everton in general. Yeah, it'd be nice to see you if you do if you if you are making the long journey down. Are you done? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Michael's back early next week, so uh, if we do get a chance, I think Michael will probably do the match reaction tomorrow. Obviously, because me and Frankie are down there, he will do one at some point. Obviously, he's moved on to Orlando now. If you've seen that from Miami, um, probably try and do a little bit of a debrief on Sunday if we can. If not, it will be early next week when Michael's home. I think he's done a 10-day holiday, so it is next week he's home. Right, folks, don't forget, hit the like, hit the subscribe button. Any comments that you do want to leave, we do try and reply to them. Um, Frankie gets a lot of love on here, so again, I will say it again. He appreciates it, and I appreciate it as well. He's a good standing, I suppose. Um, I think he's. Well, I don't even think he's a better standing. I think he's better than Michael, but there you go. Can't do nothing about that, can we? I'm actually scouting. I don't like Michael, so... Right. Okay, folks, don't forget, like and subscribe, any comments we will answer to, and hopefully we will see you tomorrow. Cheers, everyone.